Our lesson today is entitled Call to Serve and it's found in Luke the 14th chapter verses 7 through 14. This is Sunday School lesson from March 3rd, 2019. My name is Tony Miller and our key verse for our lesson today is for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. That we are all just like Christ called to serve. Next slide. So the aim of this lesson is to describe Jesus' view of humility, to distinguish between behaviors that indicate humility and those that don't, and recognize the paradoxes of the Bible we, as we encounter them. This is my YouTube channel, pretty close to 100 lessons now in my archive. I ask you if you would hit the subscribe and the bell, and you'll get these lessons automatically. And I ask you to hit the like button if you so choose and share these lessons as they hope to build this, uh, the subscribership of this channel. And obviously I appreciate comments as they help motivate me and keep me encouraged to share the word of God. Next word, next slide. So my, con my style of teaching is always about the context and the content. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. And we navigate our lesson each week, first by verse, by the International Sunday School lesson text. Next slide. So as always, I provide you some measure of background for a lesson that encompasses somewhere around 13 to 16 minutes. It could be longer times. That, that also, that background includes definitions, terms, people, history, maps, and places. We always give you an opportunity to fast forward through the background if you so choose. I think it's relevant thus I share with you each week some relevancy to our lesson. Next slide. First term. Term in our lesson is parable, parable of Christ. A parable is a story to illustrate the spiritual truth. It literally means something that's thrown alongside something else. Jesus employs this method of teaching quite frequently. Parables are a way to use examples from everyday life in order to illuminate people's mind regarding an abstract reality. Next slide. Pharisee, another term in our lesson today. There are, there are two main groups uh, that were the leaders at this in uh, the time of Christ and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Pharisees said that they believed that the whole, they believed the whole Old Testament, but often they pretended to be holier than they were and they obeyed, they obeyed only the un, uh, the important rules they thought were important and they believed that it was more about the religion and about their temple than it was about anything else and their only position and their authority and that's what they were more concerned with. Next slide. Sabbath or Sabbaths. According to Jewish tradition, the law of Sabbath observed from a few minutes before sunset on Friday evening until the appearance of three stars in the sky on Saturday night. Sabbath ushered in is ushered in by lighting uh, of candles and reciting a blessing. Traditionally, three festive meals are eaten in the evening, in the morning, and late in the afternoon. The evening meal typically begins with a blessing called the Kiddush, and, uh, and another blessing cited over the two loaves of Kala, uh, the uh, Shabbat, uh, is closed the following evening by Havdalah blessing, and Shabbat is a festive day when Jews exercise their freedom from the regular labors of everyday life. It offers an opportunity to contemplate the spiritual aspects of life and to spend time with family. Next slide. Uh, wedding or feast, a uh, part of our lesson today is about this uh, dinner, and it's, it, it begins with this uh, wedding uh, or feast uh, of, of this wedding. Next slide. Another point in this lesson is this resurrection, and according to Old Testament, they always, when they say resurrection, they always been, uh, think about the resurrection at the end of days, uh, uh, all flesh will be judged. That is their whole concept of resurrection. Next slide. The host in this lesson traditionally is whoever paid for the wedding or this dinner is considered the host and therefore is given the right to have their name printed on the wedding and invitations. And they also sit at the heading of the table as well. That's the whole host. Next slide. And our guest in this uh, in this uh, event is Jesus. The, those Pharisees invited him 
to this dinner. Next slide. Word in our lesson today, exalt, to raise to a lofty height, elevated or honored. Next slide. Another word in our, in our lesson today is humble, to be gentle, to be quiet, to be unassuming, to be bashful or shy, or self-conscious. That's this whole thing about being humble or humble. Next slide. Humiliation, another word in our lesson, uh, humiliation uh, it has a connotation that we are being embarrassed or feelings of shame. However, we must also recognize that God calls us to be humble, recognize that, that we are not the best, yet not to feel shame about it. Jesus is going to show us exactly how to do that, and that's what we learn in this lesson as well, how to be humble. Next slide. Paradox. Now, paradox is not in our lesson, this word, but it, this whole concept, and that's why I share this word here. Paradox is a statement of a proposition that seems self-contradictory um, or absurd, but in reality expresses a, a possible truth that I must be cruel to be kind. That's the whole paradox, how you say something that, uh, in one way that it seems absurd that they, uh, they're expressing some truth. Next slide. And I share you seven great paradoxes of the Bible. There's probably 20 or 30 of them. I'm going to share you seven that I'm going to share with you later in this lesson as well. Uh, one is exaltation through humility and strength through weakness and receiving through giving and freedom through servitude and gaining through losing or living through dying or finding through losing. These are kind of the paradoxes and that whole concept that I just shared with you. Next slide. This whole concept of paradoxes is, is important because for God says that my thoughts are not your thoughts and neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Uh, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways more than your ways and my thoughts more than your thoughts. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, that, that when we look at God as trying to give us some understanding and, 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 and part of that whole reason for parables and that's the whole reason why these paradoxes are a teaching uh, tool that God's ways are different in our ways. People will tell you that oh uh, okay one of the paradoxes is Jesus is the son and the father is the son so how could the father and the son be equal if the father is the son the, the father is the father and the son is the son it's one of those things that the Jehovah's Witnesses and other people, and, and uh, uh, they try to throw these weird things, but God's ways are not our ways, and it's, and it's again, we have to trust in God and not trust in man and trust in the, the knowledge of man because God's ways are different than our ways, and that's this whole concept of paradoxes and this whole concept of parables as well are God's way of teaching us what he wants us to know. Next slide. So how did we get here to our lesson today? We found in Luke. Next slide. So in Luke chapter 14 today, that here's a summary of this uh, Luke chapter 14. The Gospel of Luke presents Jesus as a savior of the world. Luke, Luke's Jesus shows a deep concern uh, for the deep uh, dispossessed. Um, I mean the lower, the lower people, the lowly people. Jesus reverses the social power dynamics to reveal the order of God. In Luke 14 and 1, Jesus is present at a dinner in the house of a Pharisee, a member of a Jewish sect who practiced strict observance of the law. That's how those Pharisees did. They're strict about the law, but the laws that they want to be strict with. Those presented at the dinner were eager to hear and see Jesus' actions. Uh, on two other occasions, we find in Luke 6, uh, uh, 6 through 11 and 13, 10 through uh, 17, Jesus infuriates religious leaders by healing on the Sabbath and a holy day observed by the Jewish community to honor God. Jesus redefines the social religious order by performing a healing on a man uh, uh, suffered with swollen arms and legs on the Sabbath at that dinner. 
We find in Luke uh, 14, 1 through 6, and thus exposing that the rule of God is to extend care and concern for those who are in need, and not just to be only in this kind of pocket of religious ceremonial mumble jumbo that these Pharisees only operate under. As an invited dinner guest, Jesus gives a lesson on humility and hospitality. Uh, he teaches on shame and honor associated with banquets because of who is invited and where one sits as a guest. And Jesus encounters guests to maintain or encourages guests to maintain humility at all times because his esteem will be brought low and the humble exalted. And that's verse 11 in God's reign. Next slide. So our lesson today is Luke chapter 14, verses uh, 7 through 14. Again, the gospel according to Luke. Next slide. <clears throat> so because we began at verse 7, I want to share with you that verse, uh, verses 1 through 6, and uh, that will help give us an on ramp into this lesson. So Luke 14, verses 1 through 6. Begin at verse 1. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. So those Pharisees were always trying to trip him up. They didn't like the fact that he was gaining this popularity, that there is crowds that follow him. He was doing a lot of healings and, 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 and he was being more dominant and, and the people were more in love with him than in love with those Pharisees. And those Pharisees were losing their position of power and influence and, 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 and they were watching him carefully. In verse two, and there in front of him was a man suffering from abnormal swelling of his body. In verse three, and Jesus asked the Pharisees, the experts in the law, question, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? Huh. Verse 4. But they remained silent. So, taking hold of the man, he, Jesus, healed him and sent him on his way. And then asked them, If one of you has a child or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull him out? And they had nothing to say. Again, God's ways are not man's ways. Again, Jesus reverses the social power dynamics to reveal the order of God's. God's ways are different than those Pharisees. Amen? Next slide. So the setting of this lesson is in, in Israel, uh, as elsewhere, the meal table was closely tied to one's social standing or pecking order. Uh, it was reflected in the position one held at the table. Places at the table were something like chairs in a band. Uh, they all have a rank or in a band or orchestra. There's a first chair, a trumpet position, and then there's a second chair, and a third chair, and a fourth. And everyone eagerly seeks to win the first chair. Some believe that uh, at the Last Supper, Jesus, Judas may have been seated at the chair of honor with that first chair. And the Pharisees who attended the, this meal not to mention the many others, seem to think that one's table position not only, not only reflects one's position, but may indeed create it. And thus, people jockey for position at a meal, at mealtime, so that the one, so that they could end up in the seat of honor. And I'll share the seat of honor in a second. It is like the musical chairs, except there's no music. Next slide. So now to our Sunday school lesson, about a little over more than 13 minutes of background. Hopefully it was some benefit to you now as we move into our lesson today. Next slide. So Sunday school lesson call to serve Luke 14, verses 7 through 14, we are. And this week I'm going to share with you in the NIV, and we began with verse 7, that verse 7, when he, Jesus, noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table. Then he, Jesus, told them this parable. That they were all picking their place, trying to be in the right spot. I share with you an image of musical chairs. Amen. Next slide. 
Sunday school lesson call to serve. Luke 14, verses, verse 8. So Jesus says that when someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. You know, you don't know. You go sit down in the seat and then you think that you're the one that the most important, but there may be someone else more important who's coming to the table. So he's giving these Pharisees some wisdom. And I share with you this position of etiquette, etiquette that uh, that the host sits at the, at the head of the table and there could be another host that sits at the other head. And then usually the, the guest of honor, the, or that, that distinguished seat, that is that uh, guest of honor seat that sits next to the host. And that's where it's typically there. And that's where people want to find themselves in that honorable seat. Next slide. Again, uh, Luke 14, verse 9. And if so, the host invited both of you will come and say to you, give this person your seat. Now, here you go. You sit in that honorable seat, and then you're going to get moved because the host had someone else in mind for that seat. Again, uh, when you then humiliate it, you have to take the least important place because everybody else is taking other seats. So no doubt you'll have the less important because you thought that you deserve the best seat in the house. But no, Jesus says, to, so the host will invite both of you. You will come and say, to give this to your, this person your seat. Again, Jesus giving these Pharisees a little bit of wisdom. Next slide. Sunday school lesson called to serve, Luke 14, verse 10. But when you are invited, take the lowest place. So when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. And then you will be honored in the presence of all of the other guests, guests instead of humiliated, huh? I'll share with you an image. Next slide. Sunday school lesson call to serve. Luke 14, verse 11. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled. So you exalt yourself thinking that I deserve this seat in this, um, at this dinner. And you find out that it's better to be not to exalt yourself for all those who exalt themselves will be humble and those who humble themselves will be exalted and that is this lesson that Jesus is teaching these Pharisees at this dinner this definition of paradox the term paradox is from the Greek word paradoxin means contrary to expectations exist, existing belief or perceived opinion it's a statement that appears to be self-contradictory are silly, but may include a latent truth. Again, this whole understanding of this paradox. Next slide. Sunday school lesson called to serve Luke 14, verse 12. And Jesus said to the host, when you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or your sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbors if you do they may invite you back and if so you will be repaid again here's a we're at this uh dinner and uh jesus was invited by these pharisees and and jesus is the focal point of this dinner and he's giving them a lot to think about these pharisees and now he tells them that that they should not invite those who are like them that they, 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 they should invite others because those who they invite will ultimately invite them back. I remember uh, sitting, I remember having uh, in business one said that the best thing to do is invite uh, a millionaire to lunch. And if you invite him to lunch, then ultimately he'll invite you to lunch and therefore you'll be repaid and you'll find some closeness to him and you can somehow glean off of his experiences and, and his success 
So Jesus says to this, these these Pharisees that 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 when you give a lunch or dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or sisters or, or other people that are rich like you. Because you're doing it only so that they'll repay you back. Next slide. So I provide you, provide you a little bit of a commentary for this whole concept. Jesus did not mean uh, here to prohibit an invitation and entertainment of those uh, who might be able to reciprocate the courtesy, but to condemn one the motive in which someone is something something is done. See, I want you to do it with a bad motive, or to have this exclusiveness that grown out of such a motive, which limits the invitation uh, of this class, or this whole recompense that are repaying back the the less that you feel themselves bound to treat you with the same kind of kindness and someone has to invite you back because you invited them so now I have a, a repayment back uh, they will show some kind of spirit or any dis disp disposition to do good beyond what was repaid and ultimately that richer person is going to do even greater than what you did and he says there's you no know, cliques or exclusive groups groups and churches or society there are little cliques engage almost exclusively in entertaining themselves and friends and family so that we are certain that this is wrong and jesus is saying that when you when you, when you invite people don't do it this way he says invite others next slide Sunday school lesson call to serve Luke 14 verses 13 and 14 the last two verses on our lesson that he said but when you give a banquet again Jesus speaking invite the poor and the cripple and the lame and the blind and you will be blessed you'll be blessed although they cannot repay you but you will be, be, be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous and I share with you the reg resurrection is at the end of the days when all flesh is judged and, and Jesus says that when you invite that poor and the crippled and the lame and the blind that you'll be blessed and, and you'll feel I guess rewarded in your heart that you've done something great for someone who's less than and that's what Jesus gives us these words of wisdom to these Pharisees as he sits at this wedding table this wedding dinner next slide so I share with you that you those seven great paradoxes in the Bible that I share with you earlier, and I just want to probably illuminate them just a second for you. Again, exaltation through humility and strength uh, through weakness, and then receiving, giving, receiving through giving and freedom through servitude, and gaining through losing, and living through dying, and finding through losing. Next. So we find in those texts those paradoxical scriptures, James writes, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. So we humble ourselves before God. If God lifts you up, he'll do a better job than man. And man lifts you up and gives you accolades. But if God lifts you up, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Next, Second Corinthians, Paul writes, that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness and insults and hardships and in persecutions and in difficulties. And we know the life of Paul was quite difficult, right? For when I am weak, then I am strong. And, and, and God put a, a thorn in the flesh of this Paul. This apostle Paul was one of the greatest writers of the New Testament and one of the greatest apostles and the greatest, greatest apostles and, and the one who raised, who, who's, uh, who led the most people to Christ in this day that that when I'm weak then I'm strong and God knows that and then Luke writes in Acts that in everything I did I showed you by the kind hard work that we must help the weak remembering the words of Jesus that he says that it's more blessed to give than to receive again wisdom again a paradoxical scripture and Paul writes in Romans that when you have been set free from sin you have become a slave to righteousness. When you've been free from that sin, you now slave to this the salvation we have, this this moral perfection that we have because we're now connected to Jesus and we're slaves with him. And Paul writes in Philippians that whatever were the gains for me that I now consider them a loss for Christ's sake, but whatever I got now it's it's really a loss. Again, this paradox that the what is more I consider everything a loss because of the surprising worth of knowing Christ. My Lord, 
for whose sake I've lost all things. And I consider all the things that I've had before and I've lost in, the, in this world as garbage. Because what I've gained with Christ is far better than salvation and eternal life. And John writes in John 12 and 24, Truly, truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls in the ground and dies, it remains only the single seed. But if it dies, it's going to live. It's going to produce more seeds. And Matthew writes, in Matthew 10 and 39, whatever, whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for the sake will find that these paradoxes. Again, God's ways are not our ways. And the, and the logic is not our logic. But again, Jesus reverses the social power dynamics to reveal the order of God. The order of God is not necessarily our mental, the way we look at it. Next slide. Jesus says that we should be humble, that Jesus says, here am I among you as one who serves and he, and during his ministry, he was humbled. Next slide. And, 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 and Jesus, for he was made, for God made him who knew no sin, Jesus, to be sin for us. Again, that humility that he might become the righteousness of God, that we might become the righteousness of God in him because of him. Second Corinthians 5 and 21, that, that Jesus was made uh, to be our sin even though he knew no sin. Again, that paradox. Next one. Hebrews 2 and 9, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels before the suffering and death crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, should taste death of every man. This humility that we're learning that, that Jesus is who became he humbled himself, and that's the humble that is our example that we're learning in this lesson today. Next slide. And Philippians 2, 5 and 11. I share with you a bunch of these scriptures just to illuminate this, this, uh, this whole concept of humility. Philippians 2, 5 through 11. For Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did he not count equality with God a thing to be grasped? But he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man, and being found in the human form. He humbled again. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even the death from the cross. The, the very word of God, the word of God that was there at creation, God's word that was in his bosom, his word became flesh and dwell among us. We beheld the glory of the only begotten of the Father, Father full of grace and truth. That God's word was sent down by the power of his Holy Spirit to incarnate the womb of the Virgin. And there he became in the form of, of man. That he emptied himself from his deity and become human, verily God and verily man, being in the likeness of man. He put on the tent of human flesh. And he tabernacled with man for 33 and a half years. And he humbled himself on our behalf. He became sin for our behalf to being obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross, and even the death as, a, as, a, as, as one who committed sin. That he became sin for us who knew no sin. Our lesson today is about being called to serve. And Jesus is our example that he was called to serve, that God searched and he found his word, and his word became flesh on our behalf. Next slide. Our key verse for our lesson today call to serve. Again, this verse out of verse 11. For all those who exalt themselves, they will be humbled. Just like that person at the table that tried to get themselves a, a great seat. They played the musical chairs, the Pharisees played the musical chairs trying to get a jockey for a position. And the, and for those who exalt themselves will be humble, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And I share with you that it said that they'll be, they'll be rewarded at the resurrection, and at the resurrection that we will get 
a reward for the deeds we've done in our body. And, and, and Jesus tells these Pharisees, and he tells us too, that, that don't, don't, don't invite just the rich. Don't invite the, the, those people in, in, into our, uh, to our table. Don't just invite those who we want to get something out of. Don't invite the rich to knowing that they're going to come back and repay you even greater than what you have. But although, invite that poor. Although they cannot repay you, you will be paid at the resurrection of the righteous. And I'm going to share with you this image. Next line. Here. That our example is walking like Jesus walked. That he is our example. This humility that we learn, that, 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 that is this paradoxical life that we give, we, we, we give away so that we will receive and, 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 and we, we bless and we'll be the blessed greater because we can't do better than what God does. Next slide. That I know that we could say that, well, our power we could share and we could uh, uh, we could give to the poor and we could share with the, the 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 those who have not, but but we don't do it with our own power and we don't do it by our own strength. That is not by my, my not by our my might and not by my power, but by the spirit of Almighty God that dwells within us. That is the the spirit that we have to have and that is this 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 life that we have. Because our relationship with Jesus, that we, because of the Holy Spirit that dwells in us, that is by that power, is by that spirit, that we are supposed to serve the world. That our, our, our job as Christians is to, is to serve. That we're all called to serve, just like Jesus came and served us. That became sin for us. We knew no, he who knew no sin became sin for us. And our job as Christians, we are called to serve. Our job is served by the power that lives within us, the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. Next slide. That is our Sunday School lesson for this week. Call to serve, Luke 14, 7 through 14. And my prayer for you is something you've learned today strengthens your faith that the Lord provides all of your needs. That you learn something worthy of sharing, that you enjoy learning about being called to serve. And that you are encouraged to learn with us. And I ask you to hit the subscribe button and the bell. To get these lessons automatically. And I send you out of heaven with benediction as always. Heavenly Father, send us out with confidence in your word. To tell the world of your saving and actually bring glory to your name. It's in the name of your son, Jesus. Who is our Lord and Savior. In the name we do pray and ask these things always. Amen. Thank you so much for your time. Amen.